what we have in the Quran is we have hints at the magnificence of God. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, the most merciful, the most forgiving, all powerful, unimaginable creator, unlike anything created. Every recitation of the Quran begins with, uh, with an invocation to the compassion and mercy of God. And the Quran is really nothing but a cry for compassion. The bedrock message of the Quran is that it's wrong to build up a private fortune, but good to share your wealth equally and to look out for the vulnerable and the, the poor people in, in society. That's the, that is the chief duty of every single Muslim. And the Prophet once said, peace be upon him, not one of you can be a believer unless he desires for his neighbor what he desires for himself. This is what's often called the golden rule. The Holy Quran is the uh, verbatim word of God that was transmitted to the Prophet Muhammad. Myself, a Roman Catholic priest, a Franciscan friar, to understand better what's at the core of the Islamic faith. There are, I can't recommend this highly enough. Sadly, uh, those who tend to grab the news headlines because of uh, those engaged with the ISIS group and uh, Al-Qaeda and, and other terrorists, they practice something that is not at all supported by the Holy Quran. It is not reflective of the Islamic faith, of, of the Muslim faith, and try to understand the richness in the peace, the justice, the depth, the, the metaphysics, the uh, world view, the understanding of God, their own respect for the faiths of Judaism and Christianity, what they call the religions of the book. All these things are, uh, you know, deeper and richer and fuller than the violence and the discrimination that exists in our world would lead us to believe. What is the Quran? It is a set of 7th century revelations from God made to Muhammad in two cities, Mecca and Medina, in what is now Saudi Arabia. It heralds the truth that there is only one God not the many gods still being worshipped in ancient Arabia. Of course, this was not the earliest revelation that there is only one God. That had been taught in Hebrew to the Jews and in Greek to the Christians before it was taught to Muslims in Arabic. These three sets of revelation set apart the people of the book, each with their own special covenant from the same God. There is only one. We believers in one God are on the same team, as it were, and should protect one another's places of worship, listed in the Quran as monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mosques, where God's name is much invoked. The Quran does not confine God's action to the formal covenants of religion. God tells us that he sends messages to all men all the time, beginning with Adam, who repented his sin in the garden and became the first prophet. The unending stream of prophets includes Moses and Jesus. Muhammad himself is the seal of the prophets, not as canceling former covenants, but as confirming them. But the love of God is not brought only by human messengers in the Quran. Creation itself is a set of messages from God, which speak a divine code that we are told to decipher. God's intent can be seen in the beauty and power of the universe. Moses does not speak alone on the mountain. The mountain speaks with him. Birds speak to Solomon. The world is constantly signaling to us, bringing us insights into the beauty and power of its maker. This should call us to a reverence for God's handiwork an important message for our ecologically challenged era. The Quran has more of poetry in it than of legislation. It sets ethical norms while stressing the need for mercy in our dealing with God's fellow creatures. Force is allowed only for self-defense and never as a way of spreading religion. Commercial dealings with fellow Muslims or with non-Muslims should be meticulously fair and never extortionate. The relations of the sexes were still polygamous in the seventh century, as among the ancient Hebrews and the original Mormons, but women are to be honored. In fact, the dowry that was paid to a husband's family 
by the bride's family in Europe was paid in the Quran directly to the bride. And she retains this bride right even if the husband divorces her or if she divorces him. This carved out an area of women's rights unparalleled in the seventh century. The Quran is a book of many levels and great depths. Even non-Muslims can learn from it as Pope Francis has proclaimed. I am Gary Wills for the Amerstein Center. As the Quran promises, patience is rewarded and there are many surprises. A degree of environmental awareness, for instance, and of humans as mere stewards of God's creation, unmatched in the Bible. And where the Bible is addressed exclusively to men, using the second and third person masculine, the Quran includes women, talking, for instance, of believing men and believing women, honorable men and honorable women. Or take the infamous verse about killing the unbelievers. Yes, it does say that, but in a very specific context. The anticipated conquest of the sanctuary city of Mecca, where fighting was usually forbidden. And the permission comes hedged about with qualifiers. Not you must kill unbelievers in Mecca, but you can, you are allowed to, but only after a grace period is over. And only if there's no other pact in place. And only if they try to stop you getting to the Kaaba. And only if they attack you first. And it was pretty obvious to me that uh, about Islam or about Muslims. In the media experience of overwhelming divine compassion. You feel yourself swept up into this divine presence. Where you feel so loved that nothing else matters. And at the same time, you feel this overwhelming sense of compassion for others. And he told me, if you don't feel that, you're not reading the Quran. One of the jewels of the Quran was this notion that you do not repel evil with evil. You, you drive away evil with goodness. And if you repel evil with good, then you find that the person whom you regarded as your enemy can become your friend. What is it like to, to read someone else's scripture? I think it's quite possible that it can change you. And so I would like to encourage anyone who's hearing these words to go out, cross religious boundaries, talk to their neighbors, because your life will be changed too. So compassion is key to the religious life. Um, and the religions all insist that we cannot confine our compassion to our own group, to our own congenial group of people. We must have uh, yan ai, said one of the Chinese sages, concern for everybody. O oh people, says the Quran, we have formed you into tribes and nations so that you may get to know one another. Not so that we may exploit or terrorize uh, or, or colonize or convert even, but so that we may get to know one another. And this is the key task of our time, to build by means of compassion and respect a global community where all peoples, whoever they are, are treated with absolute equity and respect. And it seems to me that unless now we implement the Golden Rule globally, we are not going to have a viable world. This is the task of our generation. And we all have a duty to look into our traditions, to find that compassionate core and make it speak to the world. We all have to become avatars of compassion as the Prophet was, peace be upon him. We have to be messengers of compassion in our time. Um, and we have to do this globally, even to people with whom we feel enmity, who dislike us or who are at war with us. Somehow we have to learn, as the Prophet did, peace be upon him, to speak to people who are hostile to us in a way that is non-threatening, non-aggressive, but who try to see where their pain is coming from. Habibi.
I think if we just look to the prophet, we have a model of how we should behave. Always in Mecca, when his people were being persecuted and abused, he would keep his calm. He wouldn't allow himself to respond aggressively, even when he was physically abused and threatened in any way. This is a time of fitna for Muslims. We often talk of the first and second fitna after the Prophet's death when there were civil wars and it was a time of great trial and trouble. Uh, and this is similarly a time of trial and trouble. But Muslims in the past have always used these periods of difficulty as a spiritual opportunity. They've racked their brains and thought creatively how to bring the compassionate and the, and the deep spiritual lessons of the Quran to a violent and troubled world. I kept my word, read the Quran, read it again, read supporting literature. Couldn't believe what I was reading because the Quran makes it perfectly clear, crystal clear, that women are equal in spirituality, worth and education. And as a feminist, I found this quite breathtaking. Amazing sounds, mm -hmm. because I don't speak Arabic and I don't understand Arabic. But when I began to understand each word, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. What wonderful words. But I remember reading these words in the Old Testament of the Bible. And uh, these are words that are transforming. All the 99 names of God that we have in Islam are words of mercy and grace and transformative to the individual who studies them and understands them. So mm -hmm. as I began to look into all of this, there was no choice. I came running. Mm -hmm. I came running into Islam. Alhamdulillah. I would like to say too that many Christians are taught this as children in the West. That there is only one God. And it's the true God. The God of Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. They're taught this even in Christian churches and schools, but they don't know what is Islam. Yeah. And they don't know who is the Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And when this is properly explained to them, yeah. then their eyes and ears are open to the truth. Uh, I came running into the, to the fold mm -hmm. and to the faith. Please pray for me. I want to be a good Muslim. I want to be a good example of Islam. We weren't just created when we came into the world. We have not created the heaven and the earth and whatever is between them in play. If we wished to take a sport, we could have done it by ourselves. If we were to do that at all. God doesn't create to satisfy his whims or fancies or entertain himself. The believers, what are they supposed to attain? And it's very clear when you read the, the Quran that in the Quran, God's mercy, compassion, forgiveness, kindness, beneficence, warmth, generosity, all the things we normally think associated with God are freely given to all mankind. Without, if we do not turn to God in love, then we just receive his mercy, forgiveness, kindness, beneficence, warmth, generosity, all those wonderful nurturing things, his nurturing, and we reject it. And so we never really experience that love because we never really turn to it and open ourselves up to it. It is always there for us, but unless we enter into that relationship, that love, that give and take, that relationship of love is never developed. We reject it, and that's what the word kafir means. It means to, to reject, to turn your back, to ignore, to throw something, a gift that someone gives you behind your back. <clears throat> and so the Quran tells us that the believers will experience this sublime relationship of love. Oh, you believe, if any from among you should turn back from his faith, then God will assuredly bring a people he loves and who loves him. One of the purposes of creation, maybe the essential purpose of the creation, is to produce from this subset of humanity 
the subset of humanity that will freely enter a relationship of love with God. They will not only experience the beauty of other relationships in their lives, but this love that they will experience with God is the sublime experience that they will enjoy. Not only in this life, but infinitely greater in the next when all the distractions, all the masks are stripped away. And when you study Islam, even when Islam is taught to you by somebody who hates Islam, as long as they don't corrupt it too far, you can still see the truth in Islam. You can still see the truth in Islam. To see the truth of Islam, it can change them if they want to be guided. If they want the truth, it can change them. Off his shoes, he looks at me and he smiles. You to teach me about Islam. So he went and he gave me a Quran. Read this. Come back when you have questions. So I did. And I would see things in the book. I'd be like, there it is. I got them right there. Explain that to me. And they would. This was a, a kind of awakening. Long story short, eight weeks after that first day I stepped into the Islamic Center, I became a Muslim. I'm a Muslim, a veteran, and a proud American. I had learned that I was completely wrong about everything that I felt. You know, Judaism had a message, Christianity had a message, Islam had a message. Funny thing is, though, it was the same message. It was about peace, and it was about love. My and then when I started reading, I read just chapter two alone of the Quran, I realized, oh my God, I'm home. I've been a Muslim all my life, and I didn't realize it. It's a way of thinking, Islam. If a Muslim is only a person who believes that nothing in the universe should be worshipped except God. Bernard Shaw, for instance, is one of many, a long list of people who read this and realized the truth of Islam. When people see the truth of Islam, it can change them if they want to be guided. If they want the truth, it can change them. Of one of the first Qurans ever translated to English by George Sale. George Sale hated Islam, he hated the Muslims, but when he translated the Quran to English, he was true, he was true to the text of the words. Although maybe not getting all the meaning, he certainly was true to the text of the words. I was shocked when I read it. Have you seen it? You know what I'm talking about? Amazing! The greatest commandment is to know, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. And you have to love Him with all your heart and all your mind in all your strength. And this is no different from what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was saying the same thing to his people. Same thing I mentioned in the lecture. This is certainly for us the same. So what you see is Muslims practicing the commandments and you see people claiming the commandments but practicing something else. And I have seen more converts from the Catholic Church than any other of the many sects of Christianity, and especially from the nuns, priests, and even an archbishop. And all of them are better than me. These guys and women that I see do this, they still sacrifice their whole life to get the true message of Islam, not only to you, but to Muslims as well, because we all know.